there any other questions? Um, it was brilliant. Thanks, Ahmed. Um, <laughs> Are there any other questions that, that we've got? And that can be related to anything. It doesn't have to be the specific discussion. Yes, sir. Just get you a mic there. So we're recording this, and we're going to post you all on, on YouTube, right? <laughs> it's fine. I think last year I was having a challenge, you know? a net bank client. Uh, we load 6,000 something, one mandate, but on her bank statement new pay deducted three times, of which it was 19,000 something. So the client went to the bank and say, I want to reverse these two, because for Matavila cash loan, I only know this one, the two no. And then the bank says, no, it's not reversible, like it's, it's not disputable, I will say so. She come to us in our office. When we check on our system, the, web, the, the website for the new pay, it shows only one, 6,000 something. A client she was fighting. I call uh, my account manager. He was on leave. Call center until they transfer me to the manager for the accounts managers for the new pay. I try to explain everything. The client was crying now in my office and say, you deducted 19,000 instead of 6,000 something. I never get help there until my account manager come back. He's the one who was talking with that client because now it was difficult. And then she went and opened the case now. And then she says she will go to the uh, Facebook. I took my money from the business and pay her that 12,000 something, of which the 6,000, it's correct, but the two, it's not. And on the system, we only uh, load one. So, okay, when the time goes on, I think three weeks on the line, net bank reverse one 6,000 something to her account, and the new pay reverse another one to our business. She came to the office and say, I receive only one 6,000 something, and you pay me two. 6,000 and then the other one, take it back and then I get it back. It was a challenge that one, nearly my business died. So now I don't have the answers what happened actually because we only load one. Even now I still have that question. As I said, our account manager was on leave, I would say so. And then once he come back, I explained to him and he spoke with that lady, tried to explain, but it was difficult. My apology for that, sir. So. We spoke about it earlier on, systems maturity, right? Um, and how long it took us to get maturity in systems in all the different platforms and so forth. And we said already that today, right now where we are, we still don't have maturity in the debit check system. It's better. It really is better. However, it's not perfect yet. So that specific scenario that you're talking about, we, we see some of that still today happening. Not a lot, but we do see some of it, okay? And typically it's where you create the transaction, the transaction goes through all of the channels up to the bank, it gets there, they are late to respond to us. They've got 120 seconds in a real time or on a TT3 transaction, card and pin, to actually respond to us and give us a successful response. Um, and if that response does not come in in 120 seconds, we close the line. We actually give it a little bit more time, but we close the line if it doesn't come in. And then that transaction doesn't come through and then sometimes you swipe again. And, and you try it again because the transaction just fell. And then you see two, three debits or go off against an account. So it, it, we've seen it as well. We, we know all about it. And it's something that they really, really need to go and look at. And we've highlighted these things to FASA to take to the banks to implement processes. In the ADO system, we had something called a two-step process. Not a dance move. But um, <laughs> in the two-step process, we actually checked, did the response come back and did we print out the slip? But we were in control of the entire transaction end to end. So we could actually manage that end to end. And that was fine. Um, so th that placed us in a much better position to know whether a transaction did transact two or three or whatever times it was. Obviously key and critical when you see these kinds of things, we must get a bank statement. That's, that's primary number one. Okay? I can't go to the bank and say to them, you took money off my account four times and then I don't have a bank statement. You probably had a bank statement. You probably could show it to the guy and everything. I apologize for the inconvenience that you suffered, but we will obviously, together with the banks, work at this situation to try and improve and get that maturity into the system to improve it up. Yes, ma'am. Let me give you the microphone. Software updates. How? Weapon. Yes. How do we? How do I go about it?
So weapon software updates, um, what is the process to actually do it? Uh, maybe just touch on the Delphin one as well. Okay, so with Webfin, we uh, would send out a communication uh, letter to our uh, client base, informing them of a new update. Uh, there's normally a link attached to the change log that indicates what is new in the new version. And then the current process is that the client will request an update from support. They will lock it with networks and the networks will run the update after hours. We have, our, however, already completed the development to do an automated update process. We're going forward and the deadline, I think, is March, where we will start with an automated proce process that once we've released a new version, we will take a time slot in the month where it's not close to any paydays and all the weapon sites will be updated automatically over the, uh, one evening uh, during the month. And, and Delphi is software that's released out to you guys. You need to download it and then import it, right? You upload it. So it's, it's like a normal update that you get on your phone. So you need to click the button. Have you got a mic, sir? Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I just want to ask something. Uh, uh, I had it lined and then I've sent the debit check to the client. And then when the client approved uh, the debit check, uh, on the client, it says zero amount. So the client accepted the zero amount for debit order. And then on my side, does not show if the client has approved. Later, after maybe five hours, and then that's when it started to uh, to show on my on my system. So I just wanted to check what what might be the cause of it. Because only if if I send the mandate, it must show how much I'm going to deduct, but it shows zero amount. Was was this zero amount shown on their phone or? Yes, on the on the mandate that he needs to approve, yeah. it shows the zero uh, zero amount. So it means he approved. Uh, zero debit order, in fact, because of later, that's when it started to appear on my side that he approved the mandate. And then he given also the SMS later to say the, the mandate was approved. And, and when the approval came back, was there then an amount on it? No. Still not, still yes. the zero. Yes, and then maybe after five hours later, that's when it started to. So so m maybe uh, um, more than I can just come in if, if I step wrong here somewhere but <laughs> so the, the bottom line is that the, the app and the approval channel for the transaction and so forth is not ours right it yes. belongs to the bank yes. so the bank would send that to the customer and ask them to improve something or approve something or reject something or whatever it is so if they had a glitch in their system and we back on to maturity right so um, if they had a glitch on their system or they didn't upgrade and maybe there was something else that was impacted then that could be the cause but I've never seen that before, and I've never heard of that before. Have you? Oh, yes. So please, can you get that details through to us? If, you, if you've got screenshots and stuff, share it with us. Jan's sitting right in front of you. You can share it to yourself. Huh? Um, and, and we can log that thing for you and, and get it into the banks and try and find out exactly what it was. So on your, on your, your screenshot that you would have or on your transaction, there would be a mandate ID. And that mandate ID we can use to track and trace the whole thing, and we can see what's going on. That's critical. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. So my voice is a bit uh, rusty, but we have this particular client. Um, we, we will make a loan for him and then proves and everything is fine. Then on he gets paid on the 28th. And then uh, you guys are not debiting or like he would come three days later and it says, uh, I still have money on my account, but you guys are not debiting, and he's using NetBank. So what's the cause of that? Okay, so there was funds available in the account, but the money was not debited. Which bank? NetBank. Okay. I, I, I haven't heard of that in NetBank. I've heard of that in APSA and in Capitec, because they use dual accounts. Um, so sometimes the account linked to the card is not actually the account that you're trying to um, upload the transaction against it. So that's very critical and key for you to also confirm the bank account number. But I haven't seen this in NetBank. So again, we would need to get the transactional details so that we can investigate and check it out for you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. And when you're done, you can just pass it back. <laughs> so I... So the, the, the question is um, on webin is a payout method. So currently we do um, EFT payments to the client's account directly. 
but uh, the business is uh, expanding. So maybe we, we can do like 100 transactions a day. And I think it's too much for a manual payment. So on the, on the webin, I think there's an option for um, a bank transfer. So how does it work? Or even new pay, how does it work to automate it's, it's, it? It's called bank BI. Um, let me just give it to Pierre. OK, so th th there's options, OK? The, the option that's live and available to you right now is actually the new card. We've spoken about the new card. Um, so that thing has a payout mechanism. It's automated. As soon as you get your TT3 transaction back, it does the release of the funds through to the card. Your client gets the money and so forth. You understand that a process. It's not that one that you're talking about. You're talking about Bank BI. It's actually not active at the moment, but let me give it to you. Yeah. Yes, there, there is an option that you can configure within your web fund. Uh, we're just testing it now where you set up your banks and we can on a daily basis, two, three times a day, provide you with an extract file that is ready for upload into your bank accounts for, for payouts. It so we would go into your bank account. You give us access to it. No? How do we get the money? Oh, you get a file which you upload into your bank and then your bank does the payout on it. So, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what you're talking about is a batch pay way, right? So, you want to take a batch of payments and you want to affect a batch of payments on a daily basis from one system to the other, right? You have two options. You can use your own account to do it or you can use an aggregated account that you pre-fund with us to do it. Okay, so those are the only two options in this world that you could use to get that done. You couldn't use someone else's account. Only ours are yours because we're your service provider, right? Well, he's got big budget, remember? So who knows, right? But the point is that if we're going to do that, um, what Pierre is referring to is a system that allows either singular payment or a payment or a file in a format created for you to use yourself without us involved. So you'll produce a file for you. The file will have a specific format. You log into, what's your bank right now? Is it F FNB? Yeah. FNB. So you log into FNB online banking. You choose payways. You choose your business banking platform. Uh, you select upload. Uh, then you take whatever file you created and save to your desktop and you upload it to FNB. FNB will then just process them like normal EFTs. Okay. okay, so that's the manual work in between. That depends on you having an FNB account with funds, uh, the business banking profile set up, and then limits with that actual bank account because typically all banks that allow you to do EFT payways require you to have a certain deposit amount in the EFT, pre EFT payway credit function sitting at that bank. Uh, a lot of the banks have a lot of rules around that, right? But you have to have that set up and that's between you and your banker, right? The secondary option that we talked about now and it's something we've been playing with, one and I have chatted about it a few times, it's an R&D right now. It's a EFT payway aggregate function. So basically we'll have a pool account on our side you make payment just like you make payment today to the new card profile. Same concept. Make payment to an account, put a profile number, we'll recognize it, we'll identify it, and then we'll assign it to a virtual account, and you'll be able to pay from there using one of our websites. But you have to pre-fund it, right? So you have to give yes. money to pay. Yeah, uh, we could use the same profile settlement technology we're using for the new card stuff, um, if that's your option. But it's, there's a few ways. You can settle it. Mm -hmm. You can pay us, or we can use that as a funding mechanism. So is it available in the future? Uh, the one for the batch from NewPay is. Uh, the one with Peer for the singular is there right now, and the file extract is very soon. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I assume very soon. I'm talking to you, but uh, it is soon now. Okay. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Yeah. Uh, my question is basically around um, standalone cover, uh, funeral cover. So uh, what I've found is that uh, the documents that are there, they don't have beneficiary names. So I'm not sure if that's, that's notice or maybe it's my side that maybe I have problems. Uh, but this, this time I escalated. Uh, it's, uh, it's just that he's not here. My, the, my manager is not here, but I'm not sure of the feedback. But he said that it was something that was um, actually under development, but I didn't see it there. And also with the, um, you know, if a customer took out a funeral cover, and now they want to change banking details so that um, the TT1, it's done uh, automatically from um, WebFin, then the customer will accept. You can also manage it on, uh, on new pay. 
but when the customer changes the banking details now, I need to go to Webfin and change the banking details, but that does not send the, the mandate automatically because I've changed banking details to the customer. So obviously the funeral car vault definitely um, debits the, customer, the old customer's account. So what needs to be done, uh, last time we tested, actually we had to cancel the whole policy, which created a lot of, uh, a lot of inconsistency in a way. So what uh, was advised to do, it was advised that we use the um, non-authentication, uh, sorry, the, we re-authenticate, but it has no, um, no, we can't re we have to, we re what we do? We re-authenticate, yeah. but there was no, um, no, we resubmit, but without authenticating the customer. No, 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 it's yeah. not the one. So, uh, let, let me tell you which one you have to do, yes. okay? So. <laughs> So let's just go back to the, the first thing about the beneficiaries, yeah. okay? So the beneficiaries are actually on the documents. If yours are not on, then your version might be outdated for your documents. So the people in the support desk can definitely help you just to update that um, onto the latest version of documents, which will then list all of the beneficiaries. That's for the standalone, right? The, the lifestyle cover is a little bit different. The person taking out the policy um, nominates one person and then that's automatically included. But I, I know that that's also on the documentation, but you obviously don't have the lifestyle yet. Um, so th that is in terms of beneficiaries. In terms of the person changing the bank account, and it's not only for the policies, it can be for absolutely anything, for the repayment of any type, okay? On the new pay website, if you log on there, then you can have a maintenance option there, which, which is, uh, um, uh, change the bank with reauthentication. So it's with the reauthentication, you do it bank account change. You select that option and then it will say, okay, so what's the new details? You send that off, wait for the authentication to come back and then it authenticates that transaction and moves the transaction to the different bank. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's there, it works. Yes, yes, it's under mandate. So you get installment man maintenance and mandate maintenance. Installment does not go up to the bank. Mandate goes up to the bank. So, Horner, just uh, then an update on his query where there's a zero rand value. I had a look at it. So it's actually um, a usage-based um, payment that was created in a custom upload function in a TT1 in a perpetual way where the installment, uh, first installment amount was left at zero and the maximum installment was selected for the installment amount that you selected for the 1,000, well, the amount you wanted to debit. And that's why there's, it, because it's usage-based, it wasn't, uh, you have to set the amount for the first, uh, first installment. So, so this is where debit check really, really, really gets complicated, okay? So in the ADO and the NODO environment, you had 13 fields that you had to process and push through the entire end-to-end -end system. In debit check, if you use all of the options and you don't, okay, because we default 99% of us, not quite, but um, we, we default that down to 11 fields for you in the debit check environment. However, there is actually 48 fields that you need to complete. Now, if you go onto the website, there's a function and an option where you can go on to custom upload and then you have to select all 48 fields. And you have to make sure that they're right. So if you get one of them wrong, and that is under the usage type, and then you go with the zero initial amount or the, the standard amount, and then you say the maximum amount, that's my, my debit amount, and you maybe you load that as, as 5,000 Rand, that's, that 5,000 Rand is actually just the limit up to where you can go. It's not the, the actual installment. So um, the, the, there's other complications in that as well. You actually have to go and trigger those transactions to go off. So um, who is your account manager? Sam. Okay. So Jan will spend some time with Sam, and then we will make sure that they get out to you just to show you all of the little details around that thing. And then we really advise don't use it. <laughs> so so the, the custom upload functionality can get very tricky if you start to use it. If you're not an expert user on the system, it can really bite you. So, um, yeah, it's, it's tricky. Rather use the default standardized stuff um, because we will then automatically select all of the right frequencies and default trackings and data adjustment rules and all of those kinds of things, which you manually have to choose on the other one. Cool. Thanks, Jan. That was fast. Eh? How was that service? Black <laughs>
<laughs> okay, anything else, folks? Okay. So, uh, um, I missed it, sorry. I can definitely see what I'm paying for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. on that point, you know, my, my previous boss, not, not your one that you met, <laughs> my previous boss, uh, Derek, also retired. Um, he, he always used to say, you know, we, we're a price taker, we're not a price maker. Um, and, and it's very, very true. You know, we are dependent on banks to give us a price as to what we can put out there. Um, the, the pricing for debit check was actually set by the Reserve Bank of South Africa. Um, they went to all of the banks and they said to them, is a document um, and on this document, uh, there is a, a limit. And this is the maximum amount that you may charge each other as interchange between banks. The banks seem to forget that it's maximum and limit and just say, this is the default. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, that's true. It, it really is how they interpret that thing. Um, and that is how they apply it. So um, there is a massive initiative. Ahmed mentioned something earlier on where he said, you know, our, our preferred bank of choice at the moment is NetBank. And it's, this is one of the primary reasons for that. NetBank's the only bank that's taken hands with us and said, let's go and attack at Parza, the reserve bank around interchange rates because it's too high. It is killing this market. It's killing the industry. We need to get the pricing down. Um, and that kind of approach by a bank is really, it's unheard of. Uh, but, but they know that it is really required um, and we are fighting that fight. How long does it take? You know, ADO was going to launch in 2003. It launched in 2006. Debitcheck was going to launch in 2019. We launched in, well, the cutoff happened in 2021. We launched in 2020, right? Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, these things don't happen overnight. It does take some time, um, especially in the banking industry. But um, be that as it may, it's the, the area that we all have chosen to operate in and, and to do our business in. Um, it is lucrative if we drive our businesses correctly. So, um, yes, let's, let's just continue slogging at it, right? Cool. Anything else, guys? Okay, fantastic. I want to say just thank you to you all for coming out and so forth. We, it's, it's amazing. We had 160 people that, that said to us, yes, we would love to be there today and registered and completed forms and sent it in and everything. Um, I think a number of you got stuck in traffic um, so you know that it was tough for you to get in here. Um, you told us that. Um, I think, I, I'm guessing, uh, we'll follow up, but I'm guessing that the other people thought, eh, most of the things gone, I'm going to go home now. <laughs> so maybe it's just way too late to actually still come through, right? But um, yes, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for making the effort. Thank you for sitting through traffic and being with us for a day. Um, I think it's worth it for us to just engage with people, you know, and start seeing people face to face. Johan always says something which I absolutely love, um, and that is that customer service is a contact sport. You know, it's, it's not something that you can do on a team session or on the telephone. Um, so we, we really drive towards that. The account managers, that, that's our game. We, we see you guys. As you heard Brendan say, um, his field services team, they've not been off one day. Not one day. No, through lockdown, level five, everything, they've not stayed home ever. So, um, yeah, we take our hats off to these guys and to everyone else. But most importantly, they wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't for you. So thank you for you. Um, and thanks for attending and thanks for being with us.